Miss Kitters. Today, we're going to be talking about how you can get started with open source contributions on GitHub, specifically featuring the Kisskit repos. So you might remember Alice from some of our previous uh, videos. Uh, she's been working very happily um, in her own GitHub account. She's been working with her friend Bob on her test repo. But now she wants to branch out and start contributing to one of the Kisskit repos. Um, the Kisskit organization has a lot of different repos in it. Um, and she specifically wants to start contributing to Kisskit Terra. Um, so how is she going to actually start uh, working on Kiskit Terra when all she has currently in her profile are her test repos? Well, what she really needs to do is make a copy of Kiskit Terra into her own account. And then from there, she'll be able to make some changes and make some contributions. Um, so what she's going to do is she's going to go to the Kiskit Terra repo, and then she's going to click this fork button, button at the top there. And now what that's going to do is essentially going to make a copy of Kiskit Terra and move it into her account. So you can see here now, Kiskit Terra has shown up in Alice's account. So now Alice can use and interact with the code in the Kiskit Terra repository as she normally would. Um, and any changes that she makes in her copy of Terra won't break anything in the GitHub organization Terra. OK, so now that we fought, we can see that there is a copy of um, Terra that lives in Alice's account. Um, but these are now separate entities that are evolving separately. And we will call both of these uh, repositories uh, their remote repositories. But they're going to be slightly different in that the Kiskit Terra repository that lives in Alice's account, we're going to call our origin repo. Whereas the one that lives in the Kiskit organization, we're going to refer to as the upstream repo. When Alice is doing her development work, most of the time she is going to be working um, with um, and communicating with that origin repo. We're not going to worry about in this section dealing with this too much. She's mostly going to be focusing on her on, on her copy of Kiskit Terra. Um, so for Alice to start working on, um, on this repo on her local machine, she needs to do the same thing as she would with any other repo that lives in her GitHub account. She needs to clone it, and then from there, she can start working on it. And this process works exactly the same as she would if she was just working on her own repo that she created from scratch. She's going to go to this code button in her, in her Kiskit Terra not the Kiskit version, the one that lives in her account. She's going to click the code button, and uh, she's going to get the URL. Um, and then in her local terminal, she is going to run git clone followed by that URL. This is exactly the same as she would no do normally. Um, but. Now that she uh, wants to make changes to that repo, she needs to be able to use Kiskit as a user would. But she can't do use exactly the same version as she would if she was a regular Kiskit user. If she wants to make changes, she'll need to pip install um, Kiskit, but install it from source. Um, this will mean that she can work on a development version of Kiskit, and she can run Kiskit based on the development work that she's, she's doing, rather than the official released package. Um, we've already made a video on this channel about how to install Kiskit as a contributor. Um, we need to install it from source, so we'll leave links somewhere to, for you to go ahead and, and look at that. Um, but let's say now she's cloned the repo uh, to her local machine. She has installed Kiskit Terra from source. Um, then she can just do her regular development work in her code editor of choice. Um, one piece of advice that I would give is to make sure that you are working um, in the correct environment. Um, so any work that you're doing locally, make sure if you're using a Python environment or a Conda environment, make sure it's the one that you think you're working in. Make sure that you're working in the repo and specifically the branch that you are trying to um, develop in. And if you're ever unsure about which um, 
Uh, which version of Qiskit you're using, you can use pip show Qiskit to show what you have installed. Um, and if your development environment isn't activated, if you're a Conda user like me, make sure you've always activated it with Conda activate followed by the name of your um, environment. And then lastly, make sure that any work that you're doing locally, you um, are keeping up to date with uh, the version that is going to be in um, uh, in GitHub, which you can do with git pull upstream main. But we're going to talk about that in a bit more on the next slide. Um, so in this occasion, Alice has her local version of Terra. She has her origin version of Terra. She can do all of her Git commands the same way that she normally would with any other repo in her account. She can create a new branch. She can add files. She can commit things. She can push and pull in between her origin, um, her origin repo as much as she wants. But just note that now she's working between her local and her origin. She's not really dealing with her upstream so much. But what if she wants to you know, communicate with that upstream repo, um, But this is because this is now changing independently of the work that she's doing. And she wants to make sure that she's keeping up to date. Um, so she has two remotes to keep track of. She has her origin Terra to keep track of and her upstream Terra as well. Um, so the first thing she'll need to do to make sure that she's keeping her updates is she needs to make this local um, this local repo aware that her upstream um, exists. And the way she can do that is very similar to how she would have made her origin, um, her, made her repo aware of the origin. She can use this set UR, remote set URL command. So if she says git remote, remote set URL upstream, followed by the link to the Qiskit repo, that will then make her, um, her local machine aware of the upstream version of Terra. In a previous video, we talked about how she could set remote with her origin. And it's a very similar process. Just instead of using upstream, she would say origin. And that's how she can keep her local machine in sync, both with her origin and her upstream. This can get a little bit confusing when you have multiple remotes to deal with. So you can, Alice can always check if uh, what remotes she has available to her by using git remote dash v. This will list out what her origin URLs are, what her remote URLs are. You just want to always make sure you're being careful to use the correct URL. So here, Alice is setting her upstream. So she's using the link, the address um, for the repository that lives in the Qiskit repo. Whereas if she was setting her origin repo, she would need to set the URL to the one um, that is in her own account. And then from there, if she wants to update her uh, local work with what she's got going on with what's happening in the upstream, then she can do git pull upstream main. Uh, this is the easiest and most direct way of doing it. This is how I do it. Um, but an alternative way of doing this is to instead, in the GitHub UI, she can go to her um, main branch in her Qiskit Terra repository. And she can click this um, Fetch Upstream button. And she can click Fetch and Merge. And then in her local terminal, then she can do git pull origin main. And so if we compare that to what we were looking at earlier, this one command will pull directly from the upstream into her local branch. It will kind of like forget that this origin thing kind of exists. But then that means that this, um, this main branch or, or these branches aren't getting updated. So if she does want to keep her origin up to date, then she can do fetch and merge. And then she can pull from her origin into her local. Either way is doable. It's pretty much just personal preference which one uh, you would rather do. In Git and GitHub, there are many different ways to do the same thing a lot of the time. And ultimately, just make sure you're doing uh, what you're comfortable with. And that's it. That's the basics of how to fork the Qiskit Terra repo, how to get that copy onto your machine, and how to make changes and keep your work up to date uh, with what's happening um, in, uh, in GitHub. 
the concepts that we talked about today were specifically focused on Qiskit Terra, but these concepts are pretty general and could be applied to many other open source repositories, not just um, the Qiskit repos. Thanks very much.